August 28, 1995, a remarkable film depicting the autopsy of a humanoid life form was transmitted into the homes of millions of television viewers worldwide. The horrific but compelling images started a heated international debate. This program reveals for the first time the face of the man who claims to be the former US military cameraman who shot the film. In his extraordinary confession, he details his recollection of the events surrounding the crash of a UFO in the desert of New Mexico in June of 1947. He tells of his feelings while filming the crash site and the autopsies of the bodies that were found there. Until now, the alleged cameraman has refused to go public, fearing for his and his family's personal safety. His identity and the verification of his service record have always been key factors in the investigation of this film. Responding to international pressure, Santilli has persuaded him to answer our questions for the first time. The film you're about to see was made under the cameraman's unconditional terms, which were, one, questions to be submitted in writing, two, no film crews to be involved, he would film his responses himself, three, the film would be delivered where and when he stipulated, and at 15 minutes notice. I will read aloud each question before the cameraman responds. I have here some notes, and on these notes I have answers to precise questions. My son is here to help me with this interview. You will excuse me, this is first time I've been in front of a camera, and I am a little nervous, and I will use my glasses. And I have prepared a statement before we go on with the interview. I am the person who shot the film. I will not tell you my name, but I want you to know that I am not happy that I have betrayed my country. Our United States of America is the greatest country in the world, and I am proud to be an American, and I do not want that to change. Question one. What influenced your decision to become a cameraman for the military? It wasn't my decision to become a cameraman for the military. They found out that cameras is something I understand and do best. And that's why I was given the job. Question two. What were your military assignments and duties prior to the 47 UFO crash? No comment. Question three. Describe the events leading up to your departure for New Mexico and what you were told about your special assignment. Yes, I remember I got a call from McDonnell telling me to make a report to General McMullen. When I got to McMullen, I was told the plane had come down just outside Socorro, New Mexico. A flight was being laid on to get down there, and I was to be on it. I was told to build the crash site and stay with the team. Nothing else. Question four. Tell us everything that occurred from the moment you landed in New Mexico up to the time that you arrived at the crash site, including the location, and how you were transported. Uh, let's see. I flew out of Andrews with the team, mainly medical, I think. We stopped at right field to pick up other officers and men, changing planes, and flew down to Roswell Air Base. Uh, we had a lot of equipment with us. After the flight, we traveled by road and dirt track to the site. Question five. When you first set foot near the crash site, what were you told to do and how did you feel about it? I were injured creatures lying around, obviously in pain. But the men at the site were too scared to get close. Oh, there was a great deal of confusion until we arrived. My authority allowed me to operate as an independent as long as I didn't appear with the cleanup. When I arrived, I set up my tent and equipment, and once I had light, I started shooting. How 
However, I feel about it, there was concern about potential contamination. But I had no choice. Question 6. Who else was assigned to the crash site, including other photographers, scientists, military brass, and anyone else who had military clearance to visit the site? Even if I could remember, I wouldn't give you names. Yes, there were scientists, military brass, and medical experts. Even Truman's team got down there. It was the full works. Question 7. What were you told as to how the flying disc crashed? We were told nothing in order not to discuss what we had seen. <laughs> we all knew it was not a spy plane or any other type of plane that we had seen before. No one knew how it crashed or where it came from. Question 8. What were the things that you filmed at the site and how did you feel about what you were filming? I filmed the crash site, also the poor freaks that we were told to keep back from. I filmed the vehicle itself and the area around it. I felt nervous of something I could not understand or explain. Question 9. How would you describe the interaction between the strange beings and the military personnel? The freaks kept crying out. And the men were scared, but they were trained and they were ordered to go in. They treated it as a war situation. The first job was to recover the objects the freaks were holding, just in case there were weapons of some kind. I filmed the assault on the freaks to get these objects. It turned out they were not weapons, but control units of some kind. The freaks didn't want to let them go, but they didn't stand a chance. We got them. Once the units were secured, the freaks were removed. Question 10. After the film was exposed, how was it handled and who prepared it for development? I kept all the film with me. And back at base, I processed it. Question 11. What happened to the bodies and the disc after they were moved? Give me the question again. Now the freaks were taken by the medical team to a lab that had been set up at Fort Worth. The debris and crap were taken to Wright Field. Question 12. How soon after the crash was the autopsy conducted and where was it performed? The first autopsy took place about three weeks later. I built some at a small lab in Fort Worth. Question 13. What were your orders as to how you should film the autopsy? I was never given orders on how to shoot film. My brief was the same. Film everything. But stay out of the way, which is what I did. Question 14. Who were the other personnel involved with the autopsy? Who do you think I am? I can't give names. Question 15. Explain what difficulties you encountered while shooting the autopsy. Well, the protective suits made my job very difficult. Also, the air feed into the feet kept tripping me. The surgeons were always getting in the way, but I expected that. Question 16. How was the film that you shot of the autopsy developed? In a normal way, I developed the film myself back at the base. Question 17. What problems did you incur after developing the film? Most of the processing took place around August. By the time the military, as we knew it, ceased to be, the Air Force and the Army were about to split, and my unit was about to be disbanded. For a time, anyway. <laughs> in fact, you could say I was in a strange position for a time of not belonging to either one service. Then eventually, they found a home for it. Question 18. 
How was it possible for you to take home the key piece of evidence that proves these strange beings exist without being caught? I took on the film because I had no one to report to. My orders were not to discuss the situation with anyone, unless they brought up the subject first. The first batch had been delivered, and the department folded, and I had no one to deliver to. I tried to contact McMullen, but I couldn't get through. In the end, I couldn't leave it laying around, so I took it home, which is where it stayed. Question 19. Why did you wait so long, almost 50 years, before you presented the autopsy footage to an eager buyer? I didn't present film to an eager buyer. It didn't happen that way. One thing led to another, and I felt that there was no reason to keep hold of it any longer. Also, I needed money at the time. Question 20. How did you meet Ray Santilli? I was in Cleveland looking for music film. I had some footage I shot in 55 when I was freelancing, and he was interested in buying it for a documentary. In fact, I wouldn't have met him, but had not been for my son, who discovered that a British company were in town looking for old film. Question 21. During the 50 years, who else has seen the footage, and what was their reaction? No one. Question 22. How were you able to keep this film in your possession for nearly 50 years and keep it a secret? Well, the film was kept safely hidden for about 40 years. I never got to handing it back and just didn't want it in the house. Keeping it a secret was never a problem. As it was among other film cans, most of the time I didn't give it a thought. Question 23. What has the response from the U.S. government been concerning your release of a classified film depicting an autopsy of such huge historic implications? I don't know. Thank heavens I haven't heard from them. Question 24. What would you say to people who suggest that this film is government disinformation and that you are part of a worldwide psychological test to see whether the public can handle and accept the possibility that these strange life forms exist. A test lasting 50 years? People can think what they like. All you have to do is look at the film. I can't tell you what these freaks are or where they came from, but it happened. Question 25. What effect has the recent Fox broadcasts of the autopsy film had on your life? Well, frankly, I wish I had never sold the film. He kept that to me until I sold him the film. I sold him the film because I needed money. I'm not proud of it. Santelli took about 25 reels. That's it. I'm going now. No more questions. Turn it up. No more.